taking time to join us on Somebody. the NTA. This is the Medley Show and my name is Cecil. As usual on the Medley Show, week after week, we bring you different topics. So we discuss different issues and of course you are an important part of our discourse on the program medley show um security has been a recurring issue on different uh, media media medium of broadcasting and uh, for instance there was this one that was really touching of this uh, young girl from cross river state who went to who sought for a job she got the job she went to Lagos and uh, or she traveled for the job and never came back alive. There are many cases of such. How can you stay safe will be what we'll be talking about today. Your safety is very important. Sometimes we even hear, oh, my sister went jogging in the morning and somehow she was kidnapped and they're calling us a ransom. Not just that, we still have our online and cyber security on your phone, your email, text messages. People get to send you this. Even though we already, we've talked about this week after week on different um, channels, yet we still hear many of our friends and family fall victims of this fraudster. We're going to share our experiences. I would like to hear from you. What, have you been a victim before? Or are there any questions on how to stay safe online and offline that you'd like us to talk about on the program? This will be our focus on the Medley Show for today. But first, uh, just to set the tone for our discourse today, uh, let's, let's take a look at this feature. This feature captures the experiences of some Nigerians we met on the street. They told us their story of how they fell or not fell victim and then um, some of the way forward. So let's have a look at it, then you'll get to meet my guest. The arrest of high-profile internet fraudsters by the EFCC, FBI, and Interpol have left many worried and wondering how safe are our activities online. The Medley Show crew went on the streets to find out how many Nigerians have experienced financial scammers and if their acts went through. I applied for a job. Someone got my, my information, not knowing how he did. Called me and told me to pay for screening, form, and some other training. Then he asked me to go to the headquarters he sent me an id number a badge number that I should go to the headquarters with it after paying him seventy five thousand, and when i got there they told me i don't have to pay anything in their office everything he done there is free i had a phone call somebody claimed to be my in-law and i sent gifts from us i should call a certain person that retrieved the gifts from him so when i called the person that should forward him a sum of two thousand credit what that he will be able to facilitate the, the movement of the gifts to reach me. So it didn't sound real to me. So they tried several attempts by calling my name about my account number. I only tell them that which bank. Once they mention the bank, I will tell them that I don't have business with that bank. That is all. They will just switch off the phone or they will laugh. They only tried to scam me by calling me to tell me that, yeah, do you bank with this bank? Yeah, I was like, yes, initially, but when the guy started asking questions, I knew that he was going to scam me. So I told him that, oh, God, you for check my this my profile before you scam me. Oh. Now how the thing, they had the matter take half from me that. They called me, they, they said they are from uh, COVID-19 taxes. They are giving out 30,000 30, naira. For each individual and so i should give them my account number after i call the account number then they now call the serial number fully i thought it was legit so they said i should give them my pvn and my pin or my date of birth i said no i don't have a pin they said no i should not worry their access to my account now they can do anything they want to do with my account now before i know I received a lot. Yeah, I was having 5,000 in my account. So they debit me. Many of the operations of fraudsters happen over unsecured internet sites. Once these sites are entered into by the potential victim or unsuspecting user, 
The rest is history. How many Nigerians know how to identify an unsecured website? It's really hard to know. Not really. Once you log in, like you log in www.google.com, you have to see that there's a padlock before the www.google.com to know that the site is secured. But if the site is not secured, you will see a danger sign showing that the site is not secured. It is clear that many Nigerians are unfamiliar with the two variation of domain names. HTTPS, which stands for Hypertext Transfer Protocol Secured, meaning it is a secured site to browse, while the HTTP without an S means this is unsecured and may most likely be a fraudulent site. On the Medley Show today, we will attempt to inform and educate millions of viewers who every day surf the net on how to stay safe on the online community. All right, now you have an idea of what we were talking about today, how to stay safe online and not just online, offline also, like I said at opening, um, the very many incidents of um, insecurity around us in our area. Well, we'll be talking about this and much more. You can be part of this conversation by sending us a text message or a WhatsApp on our phone line 81 one double seven eight twenty twenty and the number is actually on your screen right now i'd like you to be part of this discussion tell us have you actually have you been a victim tell us what did you do do you have some questions on what to do what not to do anyhow to help me talk about this and uh, much more i have my guest and this guest is uh, well he's not a usual face on this program but you get to meet him now he is a security consultant amongst the many others he is the G gmd of protection plus solution services he does stuff with um, young people anyhow I get to meet my guest his name is chris saluta chris you're welcome nice nice to be here thank you for having me uh, yeah. it's a pleasure to be here yeah and, uh, your cv is quite intimidating so i'll get i'll just stop at that uh, you do some social work with young people right yes i i do a lot of work with teenagers with in teenagers. particular yeah ah uh, very well, interesting set of well people. interesting set of people uh, because they are also those that are mostly online there yes. are quite a number of them online. Yes, yes. All yes. right, you are, a, you are a security expert. Yeah. We've, you've listened to that. Yeah. We want to comment very quickly on one or two of the... Yes. Uh, well, the reality of the world we're in today, uh, taking a cue from one of your... Uh, one of the guys you interviewed he said they called me they said they are from the COVID-19 team and they want to give me money. Mm. That's a big... Uh, that's a very juicy bait. So you, you're already in a situation where you feel broke. You're broke. Mm. And someone calls you and says, look, we're from this uh, COVID-19 government team. Mm. And your name has been selected as one of those we should give money. Palliative. I mean, eight out of ten will react with, oh, wow, lucky me. God has answered my prayer. What do you want from me? That's... That's a very good line. So what, what's, the, what's the usual conversation like? So when I, they say, okay, maybe they'll tell you, or I send this, uh, your name and number to this detail. So how does the process continue? Uh, if, for instance, I get to actually send my, my name, yeah. you know, they take you on a series of other questions. Yes. Uh, yeah. So at what point do I get suspicious? If at the beginning I don't, I'm not suspicious. Well, the thing is, that's, that's what I'm saying, that it, the reality is that what's the protocol of the government agency? That's not their protocol. And sometimes they, they will just add one letter. It will look like very much like their protocol. Sometimes it's just an S or just something that is added or removed. Yeah, so that's why you're doing a program like this. So you're trying to inform people because the, the th key thing here, Seal, is this. Um, Today's economic reality makes a lot of us bring down lower our guards. Mm. Uh, and these guys are also Nigerians. Mm. They are also in this reality. So they are trying to play the advantage mm. to their own side. So when you get calls like that, uh, we've, we've all, uh, personally I've received those calls. So yeah. you need to lead them on a little mm. to tell 
where somewhere along the line they will give up certain kind of information they are asking for that ideally should be coming from an authentic source, not this source. That means the information they have is not complete. Mm. If a banker, if your account officer is calling you, they will have a complete information. So once somebody is calling and they need you to complete <laughs> their information, not verify now, yeah, complete, complete it's, it's two different things. Ah. It's two different things. So someone calls you and says, your name is Cecile, spelled as A, B, C, D. It's different from your name is Cecile. Please confirm the spelling. Yeah. It's two different yeah. things. So the moment you spell, they'll say that's the right one uh. and start taking you on from there. <laughs> so it's, it's very subtle. And that's why... One of the things I tell people, anytime you get this call, make sure that you're not caught off guard. So you might be multitasking when those calls come in. I had, I had a, a girl in my house that lost her money through this kind of thing. And I've coached her already through this. And I asked, how did you fall for this? And she said, well, uh, so at the time they called me, I was doing this thing. So by the time they called me, I wanted the conversation to be quick so that they can finish it. So I just kept going Aww. along and... Whew, and before you knew it, she started getting the debit alert. Wow. That's when she realized, this is that thing that a guy was telling me. It has happened to and me. And many times they do it um, on Fridays, weekends, at nights when... How, how they get it right, I don't know. Mine is, anytime I get but, strange numbers, mm. yeah, you want, I just want to settle down. Okay, this could be one of those calls. I'm not busy. My mind is free. Let's go. In case. Just in case. Yeah. Anyhow, we'll get to talk more about this. Let's talk about... Things that happen around us. Of course, we know these are unusual times. Yes. Yes. We. I told the story of the young lady we saw all over. I and think that justice for Warren. I yes. think. Then there are several other of such. Uh, we hear people say, "Oh, I got a job. Oh, I went to see my boyfriend. Or yeah. this happened, and yeah. this is it." So, how can we stay safe in such situations? Well, um, once again, I mean, thanks for putting this together. Uh, the reality is. Um, a lot of a lot of um, the current unemployment rate in Nigeria, unfortunately, mm. is also contributing to this. And yeah. what it means is a lot of very intelligent guys are now unemployed, unemployed, yeah. and they are the ones driving some of these things. Mm. So imagine a very sound engineer, a very sound doctor that is driving this kind of act. These are not people that, these are planners, these are logical people. Uh, so in situations like this, there's one that happened to a friend that they, 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 is a project manager mm. and they sent him everything to say, we have a project in Port Harcourt, come and look at it and we'll give you the deal. It was a kidnapping scam. Wow. And in the process, the guy was kidnapped. So, yeah, but what, what he, I mean, that's what he does and yes, so, maybe so he must it, have made some... No, in this instance now, we also need to be aware of our friends, people we keep in our network. Remember I said, the unemployment rate is not helping this reality. So sometimes someone in your network, not too far away from you, is also giving out your details to a team. It, this might sound very strange, no, no, but, it's true. but that's the reality we are in. So you need to also be aware of this. But coming down to the issue around job, uh, even though this one made headlines, it's been happening. Yeah. I know we're not tracking these statistics, but it's been happening. And what I tell people is um, you need to also not allow the, the desperation of looking for a job drive you to the wrong site. There are legitimate sites that do job pla advert placement online. Now, um, I know these guys also advertise on newspaper and all mm. that. When you see those adverts and you want to apply, you need to first of all do a research. Mm. It's like uh, you talked about online uh, security. It's like going to SOF. SOF means you are on a SOF board in the, in the water. Now, that water is shark infested. Yeah. How do you okay. save yourself? One of the first things you want to do is you monitor the report that the authorities are giving with regards to are sharks there this season or are they not mm -hmm. there? You need to be aware of that. You don't just carry your surfboard and go on and the water works. and start surfing because that's their territory. The virtual space is a territory where 
all thing goes. Everything goes. <sighs> so one of the first thing you need to do is you need to research those guys that are saying they have a job opportunity, especially the ones that make adverts. You need to call your network. You need mm. to confirm. If they say they are somewhere in Garaki, you need to find in your network who is in Garaki. Check. Kind of... Not you now. Yeah. Check. Because you're already in a desperate mood. You did a job. So your judgment is it's already... Clouded. yo. So you did get someone else, a friend. I got this advert. I just want... Can you just help me check? The person checks and listen to their feedback. Based on that, you also... If you eventually continue the conversation, you need to continue you need to tell someone this is the address i'm going there on so 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 day and in the conversation with them you let them know that you have informed someone oh do i have to let them know you you don't say it directly you yeah. put it in the conversation so your office is around that area okay uh, uh, yes okay. i think uh, i even informed my uncle and he says he knows that place so that's fine i'll, I'll, I'll be there okay you're not saying it directly yeah just to say that okay I'm if familiar they have with any wrong intention it cuts off yeah they'll cut it they'll off, just cut off the they'll cut it off they'll cut it off and i have a serious a case in point recently of a mother whose daughter mm. got a call for a modeling opportunity and mm. she prepared herself she now insisted the mother insisted she'll go with the daughter mm. and the guy actually showed up mm. they didn't tell the guy so the guy saw the mother and the daughter and started changing the venue until gradually he said, I want to go and ease myself and disappeared. Mm. And the mother was like, what if I didn't come? Yeah. Okay. You know what, Chris? I, yes. I, I, I like the point, the point you're raising, but uh, very quickly, let's take yeah. a message and then we'll take our next feature. All right. All right. This person says, good afternoon, Yabo Sessi. Okay. <laughs> All right. That was because last week we did a program, uh, some weeks back with the program with the What's in the name? We talked talk about, about our different traditional names and their meaning. Oh. What's your traditional name? Odezi. Odezi. Where's that? Baby? Isoko. Yes, Isoko. What's yeah. the meaning? A good name. A good name. Yes. Your name means a good name. Yes. Nice. Yes. All right. What about, <laughs> what about um, Aluta? It sounds Aluta like Aluta is, Yeah, but that's the Latin. But in Isoko, it means uh, it's Aluata. You, you do what you say. Ah, you do what you say. Yes. Okay, it's good. What's in the name? He knows his name. Yes, yeah, I live my name. <laughs> all right, he lives his name. All right, quickly. Good afternoon, Yabo Siasil. That's for me. On this social media, all call in message. They have tried a lot to get, uh, get to scam me. Mm. But once I start encountering one to two option, one to two option is for me to just hang up or get out of the page because I have come across such in many ways but never for once been victim. This is Tolu Adekunle and he's writing us from Kano State. Well, do keep your messages coming in and you have our phone number. Our phone number will be showing on your screen, 081-1778-2020. Once again, our number, you can uh, get to be part of this conversation is 081-1778-2020. All right, we're going to take our next feature. Our next feature is... Um, a look at internet fraudsters and uh, how they go about their activities and then you get to meet another of my guests. Dear friend, I pray to the Lord He has provided me with good contact for you, a trustful and honest person. I am writing to you from Ghana where I am seeing to my dead father's estate and preparing for funeral. My father, a former supporter of Muammar Gaddafi, died with US $4 million in his accounts, which I am looking to entrust to you to help me get it out of the country. This might be a reenactment, but make no mistake, an internet foster's email may appear like this. This email is intended to make you feel sorry for the spiritual brother or sister and make sure you are hooked with the added incentive of 20% of $4 million which is $800,000 or 310 million Naira. The fraudsters make you feel he or she is desperate and willing to part with serious money when indeed it is actually you parting with the money. Internet fraudsters have cost the world economy close to $5 trillion since the year 2000. In 2017, an internet fraud cartel worth $52 million was fraud in Nigeria. It has also been reported that internet fraudsters have brought in over $2 billion since inception of the Yahoo Boy in Nigeria. 
If we look at the loss of data for banks, theft victimizing customers, we discover an unimaginable figure when this is translated into economic costs. The NDIC reports that 38 billion naira was lost in 2018 and 12 billion in 2017 to cybercrime or internet fraud. So, how do these fraudsters get your money? They do this either through phishing, spoofing, or pop-up fraud. These are used to obtain one's personal information. Another way is by using a Trojan horse, a virus, and record one's keystrokes and is delivered through an attachment, website, or pop-up windows. Another way is counterfeit websites or clone websites. So, how is it possible to spot a fraudulent mail or transaction? First, if you're on the cyber space, you watch out. When you are not supposed to put on your webcam, don't put on your webcam. Secondly, if you got a mail from an unknown source, don't open any link. Internet fraud has caused a lot of problems for so many victims and people have been arrested for crimes they know nothing about or may have invested huge sums of money in a company that does not exist. For the victims, what options do they have after being defrauded? What you could do if you're running a business, really, or individually, is to take cybercrime insurance, which is available because uh, insurance comes when all your preventative measures are fit, the unexpected has happened, then you, they will now compensate you because there's always a financial loss, really. Internet fraudsters have been known to have inferiority complex, given easily to peer pressure, or have been brought up in morally deficient homes. Many of them are graduates who continue running scams such as the African Prince and Romance Cons, just to mention a few. They seem to believe in the good life. But make no mistake, no wrong deed goes unpunished. All right, thank you very much. Um, now we get to understand uh, some of the lessons about online. Well, we can know that's not exhausted on that feature because we have a guest here who is going to tell us a little much more. We know that... Uh, even as we try to educate ourselves on how to stay safe online, these guys, these hackers, get to improve on ways. I don't know, I don't know our hackers, these um, unethical hackers in Nigeria, they seem to be one of the smartest in the world. I really don't know how they do this. But anyway, our ethical hacker in the studio is going to tell us about it. Murita Labdalai is a cybersecurity expert. Murita Labdalai, thank you for coming around. Thanks for having me. Okay. Um, true or true? Uh, uh, the those bad guys, online scammers, they are one of the smartest in the world, right? We hear, we see what they do around. I mean, it's really a bad record, but they seem to be so good at it. How do they get to do this? Are we so are we that talented? Yeah, you know, this uh, hacking of you think uh, uh, hackers are actually uh, people who try to penetrate systems. For a, for, a, for a good reason, like the ethical ones, and we also have the ones who expo exploit the talent and use it in a bad way. So you can, you, can, you can go to an institution and study hacking or ethical hacking, mm. yeah. but you are trained to use it for a, a positive uh, uh, purpose, which he is for penetration testing. He said it's because of testing. lack of jobs that those guys now uh, divert their talent for... The negative yes but at the same time you need to understand um uh, apart from the ha hacking uh, the hacking we are talking about there's also what we call social engineering social engineering yeah. tell yeah. us yes. about so it yeah. social engineering is like the conventional uh, 419 scam where i meet you in person but this time social engineering is carried out in for, uh, over the internet yeah or like meeting you one-on-one -on -one, i send you emails mm -hmm. or i use your use facebook to send you attachment and lure you into divulging sensitive, sensitive information mm. and so many other ways. Okay, I am looking for a job. I am a communication expert, or let's say um, I'm a business, um, whatever it is. Then suddenly a, a mail pops up, job alerts, you have, said you have just qualified for this. Click on this to all, uh, if you are interested in this job, 
click on this link. I'm very interested. I have been looking for a job for seven years. I just click on it. It's, I mean, how bad could that be now? Yes. You see, that kind of attack is what we call clickbait. Clickbait. Yes. Ah. Yes. So your way, the, the aim of that attack is to get some malicious um, um, softwares Internet. into your computer. Mm. So when you click this, uh, uh, this, this, this um, pop-up, it now deposits the malware, the malicious software into your computer, okay. which in turn mm -hmm. will send information from your device on, or, on activities you do on your phone, the, the, your keyboard activities, your emails, your so text messages. So they can actually control all that? Yes. Don't Just by clicking that, it. you get the, sub, the malware deposited into your phone. Wait, no, wait, 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 wait. Just that first click. It's okay. It's, are you serious? I thought uh, I would need to click on several Correct. other things before they finally... No, you don't need to because we have uh, one click and we have no click at all. You know, sometimes I'm in a group. There's someone that says, uh, that says um, uh, let me say, one designer is offering, uh, is they are having their 50th anniversary, click on this link for free handbags or free stuff like that. That's also the one click thing? Uh, it's still it's still clickbait. Clickbait. But that one falls under e-commerce fraud. E-commerce fraud. Okay. Yes, electronic commerce fraud. Just like you have shoplifting, mm. but now you have e-commerce. This time you go, <laughs> you do it electronically. Yeah. Hey, uh, this is a serious something. Okay, well, we'll take a comment from you very quickly. Let's see. Good afternoon, Cecil. I've received several emails from Gmail accounts for a job offer. I received from an email stating that I've been selected for a job in Chevron, mm. laugh out loud. Even, they even added the letterhead to the email, to the mail, asking me to fill in my details. All this right. is Christine from Abuja. And you didn't tell us if you actually ended up falling for it. Mm. All right, good afternoon. Um, good afternoon. I'm Vera texting from Lagos, please. I was scammed just last week with a sum of 10,000 Naira. Please help me. Report this on my Facebook page. Okay. Anyhow, the person now shows us the image of this. We'll take one more. Good afternoon, guest in the studio. A friend of mine account was hacked and sent me a message on coronavirus trust fund with a code. But due to it's been a while, I came across... Though it's been a while, I came across him online. I have to give him a call and now and let him know that his account has been hacked. So it's best for everyone to make necessary, you know... Yeah. This is um, Tolu Adekunle again writing f in from Kano State. Yeah. yeah. There are many of such. You know, there's the one that they'll show you a scary picture of some goiter, a child who has one broken head, and tell you, please help this person and send money yeah. to this. Yeah. That's a fundraising scam. Well, well the thing is, uh, I, I mean, I love all the terms, technical terms he's using. Okay. Uh, they're, they're very good from the academic perspective. Mm. Uh, but the reality is, um, like I said earlier on, um, the unemployment rate has a direct impact on this because, like you said, hacking is a cause. Um, I mean, they have a conference where all of them come, and a lot of these big companies pay them lots of yes. money to test the integrity of their system. So mm -hmm. what it means now is you have young people who wake up and, de and are determined in their mind that their profession will be to hack. Mm -hmm. So Microsoft will pay me to come and test the integrity of their system. That mm -hmm. means there's a continuous improvement in that skill. In that skill. Now imagine a situation where that same person is now being frustrated in the unemployment space or a close friend that can influence that person mm. says look i have a way we can do this thing and make money and when we make this money we live the life so there is the moral ground that everything just comes together you're already equipped with the skill mm. and like he said life in the physical life online so with regards to the person that talked about job interview, you did not apply in Chevron. Exactly. How did Chevron find your details? <laughs> and like I said, use your network. Where, see, see, see where we are right now. Mm. That's why I'm happy you, you're doing this and you brought my good friend here. And we need to use the community power to protect ourselves because it's the same way these guys use community power to promote their trade. Mm. So we also use. So if, for example, 
you applied in Chevron or you didn't apply in Chevron, somebody is sending you details of Chevron, use your network to find someone who works in Chevron to help you confirm this information. Mm -hmm. And based on what you get, you continue or you discontinue. Oh, okay. Do you, you need to do that? Well, it's, mm. um, well, I don't know. Let's uh, take this quick one. I've had series of calls from banks, MDAs, and other agencies MDs. asking me <laughs> to submit my BVN. We're going to talk about BVN <laughs> for relief funds. And otherwise, they'll say, is your name this or that? When I hear such, I know it's scam. Mm. I almost failed to report this scheme in 2015 and only God intervened. These uh, flames... Kakbe from Calabar, you are shouting MDAs. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, the truth is, um, let, let's, let's be realistic here. Each and every one of us in this studio right now, mm. it's, it's our level of awareness that is our defense. Like I told you, I work with teenagers and yes. one of my major focus is self-esteem. I always say a good self-esteem is a defense. In this case now, your level aware of awareness is the defense. Meaning that if you do not continuously raise that level of awareness, you can be a victim. It's as True. simple as that because these guys are good at this. They are good at this. Mm. So what you need to hold every day is your level of awareness. And like I said earlier on, each time you see those calls or those emails, make sure you are not multitasking. Let your mind be, be very clear. clear as you are responding. If you are multitasking, it might catch you off guard. And one mistake, remember what he said, clickbait, one touch, one touch, you are compromised. So they'll just be there and be fishing and be waiting until the day you send something that looks like a transaction. Guys, it's time. Let's follow. It's there now in the movie by, uh, what's her name, Funke Akindele. There's uh, a scene like that. Yeah. Where, uh, what's that, Omogeto or what's Omo the movie? Okay, the Omogeto. There's a scene like that. Uh. Where the guys were baiting the guys, waiting. Has well, it started? Yes, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah and yeah, they yeah. were money. It took them how monitor. long? They're very patient. Just there waiting. Until you know, they I'll, saw I'll, the I'll email. I'll tell you guys my story yeah. later. Then uh, we were WhatsApp. Mm. Uh, we, uh, we live on our WhatsApp today. Now, they say do two-step verification. Yeah. People get to do this two-step. When I do my two-step verification, is it possible that my WhatsApp will not be hacked again? It's possible. And it's possible it could also be hacked. Yes. How really do they even get to get... Is this someone has my number? How does it get into my... How does it work? Okay. Um, that is a very, very interesting question because people are caught off guard despite uh, implementing these two step or two-way verification. Now, let me tell you, uh, I have a friend who was attacked despite having that two-way verification. Mm. Now, this, this hacker hacked into a group, a WhatsApp group. Okay. Yeah. When he hacked into the WhatsApp group, he got her number. Mm. And from that number, he tried to perform a reset on her. But when the link was sent, he requested that she... Uh, he, he hacked, he hacked her, then hacked another group, which uh, has is a group uh, where, where, where her child is schooling. A kind of, a, and you know, they do this, uh, this with the introduction of this um, online uh, schooling, you know, online schooling uh, video, uh, what do you call it, this Zoom meeting. Zoom okay, meetings, Zoom. okay. So now he, he, he actually hacked that, 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 that group, now sent her a message telling her that, From that group. It, there's a code mm -hmm. sent to her. It is for the conference in that school that mm -hmm. she should send it back to him. And now I'm saying. You see, now he, he now used social engineering on her. Mm. She has, she implemented the security, mm. but her, she does not have side. the defense of social engineering. Mm -hmm. mm. So she now sent this pin to him. And she he now used, yes, after, that is for the reset now. Mm. He sent it to her, he sent two codes, he sent two codes. She's good. He sent the, she, sent the, she sent the first one for the reset. Mm. Then the second one was for the PIN. After you do the reset, they'll open the WhatsApp for you. Then your two-way verification code will pop, will up, pop up request. Then he now requested that she should send that same code for him. And okay. she sent it. No, uh, when they, because sometimes... He told her that he was trying to help her fix a problem with her WhatsApp. So she should send her two-way verification code. But, but how come she didn't pick it at that two-way verification when someone is requesting for your two-way verification? How come she didn't pick it at that point that this is... He tricked her into telling her that 
there's a message that that message has not come into our WhatsApp because he did the password reset. He did that. You know, normally when you do the uh, the the, uh, the the reset for the WhatsApp, yeah. the way it, it beats to tell you to to uh, keep it in your yeah. two-way verification. Yeah. So yeah. at that point, she couldn't get to her WhatsApp. So he told her that her WhatsApp is having problems. He can help her, but okay. because she trusts him and she got that information from a trusted platform, That's which is the school it, yeah. where her child attends. She fell into the social uh, engineering strategy he used that's, for her, that's an and he attacked her. And he, for me yes, now. so I, she now met me and said, "How I, my my uh, my phone has been hacked?" I asked you, "What about uh, your your two-way verification?" She said, "I implemented it." I said, "Okay, how come?" She said, "You know, I was having this. She was hiding the fact from me. Yeah, but I okay. eventually get so her to tell me the truth." She said, "Okay, truly, she actually sent some code to him, and now the guy was requesting her to send money for him before mm. he can unlock it." Okay, yes. You know, I heard about something like that when, I don't know, someone says a new trend. Yes, is it ransom? They, yes, a ransom. <laughs> Thank you. Ransom I, someone told me that the WhatsApp yesterday. WhatsApp ransom. What, oh that, my yes, God. Cyber online serious. ransom. ransom. Yes. They'll hack your WhatsApp or hack your phone or hack your email and they ask you for ransom. Good. So immediately she, he gave her, he gave her, she gave him his her two way verification pin. He now created another new pin. Yes. Wow. Local. And lock out. So even so if she, she uses her own thing, that. she can't work. go back. There's no way. And if you report to WhatsApp, you have to wait for seven days. And what? before, and before then, cause your contact have been your co uh, yes, on your contact have been uh, people I on your contact. I heard that have, thing like ransom online. This is I crazy. Know, Let's take some messages. Good day, please. How can one go about all these Facebook and account hackers? Uh, Latifa from Benue State is writing. Good afternoon. They tried to scam me through my bank, but thanks to God, I didn't fall victim. I love your program. I'm Maka from River State. Good afternoon. My name is Alhassan Ibrahim Galadima from Plateau State. I was offered. I was this. I was given. I was offered an appointment by the Presidential Amnesty Program under Presidency since 2020. After my documentation. Okay, this person is asking another question. Okay. Hello. There was a time someone called me to say he is working on the bank. I should send him my ATM card number and PIN saying my ATM has a problem. <laughs> hmm. I was scammed by a firm, by a firm racketeer. They said they have office in VI Lagos. So they opened a website which they said I should provide my account details, which I provided. And they said I should also, I should always renew every morning uh, my WhatsApp status only for me to discover some persons were paid. But a lot of us were not paid. So at this, I really don't get what this person is trying to say. But uh, there is so much of this. So now I understand from you that if the admin is, if the admin's phone is hacked, it's possible the person can get into the what the group page and, and get to access other people's details, right? Because sometimes we see when someone posts something, they say, please remove him from the group, remove him, remove him. Exactly. Or some persons just go off the group and will be added later. Is that a safe thing to do? I yeah, see. So. Um, yes, uh, the best thing is, as soon as, uh, as the group admin, you need to be very, very security conscious. Before, I, I, I advise, uh, what's, I mean, if you're creating a WhatsApp group, make sure you, uh, you don't have too much admins. Mm -hmm. you, you need to have an admin that knows about social media security. Mm. Don't just give your group uh, administration to anybody. Mm -hmm. Not, it, 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 you know, in every uh, field we have people that specialize, regardless of the person's status in the group, mm -hmm. look for the person who is, who is familiar mm -hmm. with the safety issues and give that's, it to yeah. them. That's and you, really, I'm in mean, some groups that the admin is like, there are like 10 admin on the group. That's very, very dangerous. Yes, it makes it poor. Their us. level of security awareness mm -hmm. is not the same. Mm. And the, the, the ability to, to, to take care of their phones, um, yeah, respond to certain... You see, you, you, so not everybody understands that when you get an, a message with an attachment, you're yeah. not supposed to click it unless you know the sender and you verify that the person, the number that sent it is actually the person's number. Okay, um, you know what, uh, let's actually take one more feature. One more feature, we'll get back to talk a little more. And this time, uh, we sent one of our correspondent, uh, Capsi. She actually went out on the street and sought from people to know their stories, if they've been scammed before, and, um, well, thereafter. All right, let's get to see some voices from the street, and then we'll be back. My Facebook account was hacked sometimes last year. I just got a call from 
from someone. Though I belong to a group on Facebook, and he just called me that um, an OTP is going to be sent to me that I should please. Um, it's kind of like an invitation that once the OTP comes, I should like read out the OTP for him. But at that time, it happened within a split second. I didn't think well. As we, as we are talking, I just heard the text coming to my phone. Then I saw the number. As we are still talking, then I called out the OTP. So immediately after I called out the OTP, I just saw my face because I was actually on Facebook at that time. I just saw myself being locked out of Facebook. So I tried to. I went through. I called the person's line. He spoke for a while, but he didn't. He went ahead um, posting. Yeah, what's up? Posting on Facebook that I was looking for a request from people about money, about all that, all that. Immediately, what I did was to inform a few friends of mine, and they also wrote on their own Facebook that Paul's account has been hacked. Please do not ignore any message that was sent to you. And that was that was the experience. I I, I was using my account when I suddenly discovered after a, a couple of days that I cannot access my account any longer. So when I thought of it, I said. Can't. There are a couple of people I've signed into my account in their phones. So I guess one of them was responsible for hacking my account or maybe changing the information or something like that. So I tried, I tried, it didn't work. So I had to open another account. The major one I think is when I received a mail that was purportedly sent from my bank, GT Bank. But because I've been in constant, in constant communication with my account officer, I called him, I screenshot the mail, he confirmed to me that the bank wouldn't have sent that mail and I noticed that there is a slight change from the logo and um, the presentation of the mail that um, something different from the usual mail I received from my bank so I was not in a hurry to click on what they asked me to click I wake up in the morning and try, try to access my Facebook account and couldn't get access to it then try Instagram the same thing so the scenario was my Instagram was linked to my Facebook. So since the person could access my Facebook, how is that easy? I got access to my Instagram too. So I lost all my. My story was like a story from way back, and so I lost all my pictures, my posts, my so many things, even even contacts. So that is. It. Uh, many people at one time or the other have been approached to have gotten email calls from these guys. But how you stay safe is very important. That's why you have to watch the last part of this program. We are discussing uh, online and offline safety. How do you stay safe online or how, and how do you stay safe within your environment? All right, I'll take a, some quick messages and then we'll talk with our guest a little. Can BVN give someone access to a bank without PIN and other details? This is Eva from Uyo. Okay, who is this? Can BVN give someone... Okay, this person is asking about BVN. Please, you answer the BVN question. And hi, Cecil. I've been... I'm enjoying your show. I've been a victim of scammers, but I'm wiser now. Edozie Din Naji. All right, good day all. Please, how can one go about all these Facebook hack scammers? Lafayette, a writer, Latifa. Please, all this cash loan. Okay, this person is asking about BVN also. Used to from Lagos, giving out your BVN. Is it safe? Also, even my friends are trying to send something that look like a link and I should click for free data and all that. Um, my friends are trying to send something that looks like a link that I should click and get free data or recharge card, but I usually delete or ignore such messages. Let's talk very quickly about, can you take, quickly take BVN and um, POS? You know, I'll just take the questions together. POS, I understand that. I think when you came the last time, you mentioned that when you use your POS into some machine, it doesn't go in all through, it goes in all through. How do I know a POS has been compromised? Or or when I go to this, these guys who have kiosk where you withdraw money. It's trying there now. Yes. Yeah, so I don't know. How do we just to BVN and those POS? Yes. Um, uh, let me take the POS first. Okay. You see... Um, there's this thing we call scheming. Scheming. Yes. Scheming is actually a device. Scheming device is something integrated into the POS machine. Scheming, okay. Yes. And when, when you slot your card into the POS machine, mm. the, 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 the scheming device copy the details of the card. Mm. You know, and when you 
when, when you're making payment you, the, 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 on the POS, you're asked to use your PIN. Mm -hmm. It also saves that. So the, it has the details of your card and you, your password. So a duplicate copy of this card will be created. That is how we get the counterfeit cards. So, you see, this, when, when, that, you need to be very careful with this POS machine because when you slot your card, mm -hmm. it's not supposed to go all, on, in. all in or even up to 80%. If it goes into 80%, be sure that by the time you get home, so in some cases, you don't have anything or by the time you, because they do really fast before you, before you, you, you realize everything is finished. Chris, make sure that right. it is. Yeah. You make sure that it's fifty percent uh -huh. into the machine, not <laughs> more than fifty percent. If it goes more than fifty percent, forget it. You be, your, your your details have been taken. And now there's the introduction of a cardless POS transaction too. That one is a new one. Oh gosh. Uh, this one, they ask you which bank you're, 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 you're transferring from. Mm. They create a ticket which you need to uh, impute your password immediately. Mm. Your ATM password. Now, I try to use this uh, kind of transaction in Canada. I use my passwords and I noticed that my passwords were bouncing. They told me, use another password. When I realized that I'm using my actual password and it's bouncing back, I knew there's a problem. I quickly told them, no, I'm not doing this. Hmm. I'd rather do a transfer. All right. <laughs> and that's how I escaped that one. So you need to be very careful when you're going to POS machines. Uh, yeah, so I will, you have to be watching closely. Once it is going more than 50%, now. I will yes. tell them, remove it. Correct. So tell us about um, BVN. BVN. Yeah, the BVN, not revealing your BVN code is very important because Having uh, not uh, re revealing your your BVN uh, code is uh, like providing one st one uh, eliminating one security level of your bank details. Hmm. I love the way you put that. Yes, so you're not eliminating all. Security. Yeah, just level one level because details. yes. I love the way you put that. So I think I recommend that unless. But you know there are some forms they'll tell you to fill, and especially in the office and stuff, they'll ask you to put your BVN. And sometimes they are careless with these forms, so it might fall into wrong hands. I am really very worried. I think I have to stop putting my money in my house. <laughs> okay, Chris. Now, uh, I went shopping somewhere in HMedic sometime. Then I saw, then a guy, I just noticed from the aisle, from where I was paying at the pay point, to my, going, going to his car and everything. For, I just noticed he was actually stalking me. And it was in the night. I was worried. So when I started driving, I had to start driving and taking all the different roads. I passed through my office. I, just to make sure that any car that even looks like his car was not following me. So, uh, these things happen. Suddenly, you just hear that someone disappears. So, yeah. how can we get to be safe within our environment when we're driving, in my house? How do I hire my security guard, uh, help and all? Okay, um, just to run through quickly. Um, okay. I think even all these government security agencies spend a lot of money, plus the banks, doing a lot of campaigns mm. um, around things. So, they, they publish hotspots. Uh, places you should avoid at certain times of the day and all that. So it's for you to be very aware. Like I said, these guys are very skilled. The main, your main defense here is self-awareness. You need to be very aware. Mm. So sometimes when you have to be out late at night and you are in a neighborhood where you know you've gone through a, a bulletin that was released by one of these government agencies that highlights certain parts you will take as hot spots. Yeah. So you should also try and organize yourself in such a way that you don't have to be there that late. Okay. Now, if you happen to be there that late and you observe someone is talking, you did the right thing. Uh, Logating your trip, trying to just put the person off course so that they don't know. Because you don't know why that person is talking. The person is just talking you to know your end point, right. to come another day. Yes. So you don't know. Uh, so you might just drive home and the person drives by, okay, I know where she he stays. or she stays. So you don't know. So what you did is just the right thing. But if it's daytime and someone is uh, stalking you, you also, once again, like I said, these guys, when they want to do these things, they don't work alone. They work with their community. You also use your own community. Call a friend. I think someone is following me. Where are you? Can you just show up and mm. at least let me, let's make a confrontation if it comes to that. Yes. Um, but the thing is, don't handle it alone. Like your friend that called you on the WhatsApp. If she had called you earlier, you'd have stopped that before it happened. Mm. And I love what you said about BVN, eliminating one level. 
of security. So that's that's how I put it. In <coughs> terms of recruiting your security guard, mm. there are a lot of um, security companies that provide this, and they do a lot of background check. Uh, we are moving. The times we are in now, it's not safe to just pick one guy off the street and make him your yeah, security maybe my guard. My mother's sister's son's daughter recommended. It's not safe. <laughs> it's not safe. It's oh. not safe. It's just That's the same correct. way he was highlighting everything online. And you were like, wow, wow, I'll keep my money in the house. So as you're being cautious online, you should even be more cautious physically. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Good afternoon. My name is Alora Femi Abe. Someone asked me to send my account number and my name, which I did, and the person wiped away all my money, and I was surprised. I'm so sorry to hear that. I'm not laughing, but I'm so sorry. Okay. Good afternoon. I'm Glory from Cross River State. I'm a victim twice. Mm. The recent happened yesterday. My oh. Facebook account was hacked, and now my question is, how do I block the account? Because they have used it to fraud some of my friends who are my fake Facebook friends. I really need to block or stop them. Please help me now. All right. So is this Chinwe says happy birthday, mom. Okay. Uh, Chinwe says happy birthday, mom, and many good. Oh, she has a very lengthy birthday message. She says yours truly, Ami. All right. This is Chinwe. I think she's my colleague here in NTA. She's wishing her mom a happy birthday. Let's talk very quickly about the Facebook. Hmm. She needs help. Okay. Uh, Facebook and I can very briefly. We have more messages. All right. Briefly. Uh, if you receive any message on Facebook, someone telling you to help him or you, you have a problem or you have an accident or you're sick, first thing is ask him a very, very confidential question. When was the last time I went to Suso Place? What is the name of my sister? What is mm. the name? You understand? Ask him some very, very tough, as in confidential questions, you know, if anybody, someone who just wants to hurt you will never know, you know? What is the tree behind my house? What type of tree is behind my house? <laughs> you understand? When was the last I'll time I painted my car? You know, you know, because that's the, that, is, that is the easiest way to find out if it's that person. Else, you might end up helping the wrong person. And second, make sure you have two-way verification on your Facebook. She Most needs, right do. now it's been hacked already. What can she person Now, do? what she do is right. first report to Facebook. Okay. And let, tell her friends to report right. the account report too. On her okay. Yes. Mm. Okay. She go, they go to her wall and report, and, report. Mm. and she try to do a reset. Okay. Mm. Yes, because mostly when they hack you, they change your number. Yeah. So mm. if her number has been changed, the only solution is report to Facebook, and Facebook will follow some steps to see that they help her recover. So her. Ju just want to quickly okay. add this uh, for viewers out there. You see, there is a there is a slogan we say: "A wolf." Mm. They porch belly. I hope they run belly. <laughs> I think um, victims. You will, let's let this thing of free the freebies, 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 mm. freebies. We also need to slow down in how we latch Reach. onto what is free. Mm. We need to slow down because these guys are human beings like us. They call it bait. What is a bait? Mm. It's like what we used to do those days when we want to steal our neighbor's chicken. Mm. I say steal respectfully. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you just keep throwing the corn yes. and it's following oh, you. Yeah. So here they know that freebies, just put it out there, it's free, it's free and boom. So we also need to be cautious. Um, boom. We yeah. have like uh, so many messages I can't take, but uh, let me take a few before mm. I say bye bye. Good afternoon. Umar from BUK. There was this scam call I once heard mentioning my real names yeah. that I should send the names of two persons for customs replacement that his boss offered him two slots and each person should be should transfer 100k to an account after one or two questions they never called again okay All yes right. if we know of those ones right? All, right All right. well it is assumed that NCC is a regulatory body and uh, okay this person wants um, das plank from just wants the NCC to do something about it. Yes, I yes. agree with that. Okay, I agree with you too, and I agree with. Uh, okay, I got about I was scammed some time last year, and one million naira was taken away from my account. You didn't write your name. I have so much more messages here. Don't worry, I'll take time. I will meet with my with our guests, and we'll reply your messages privately later. You all do keep your messages coming in. Thank you very much for being part of this. I'd like to once again thank my guests who have been talking online and offline security, how to stay safe online and offline. Marita Abdullahi, thank you very much. Cybersecurity expert, you've done so much. You've talked so much. I know you have so much more to talk about. 
But yeah. I'm very sorry we don't have um, all the time to do that now. I appreciate you. Thank you. All right, not also forgetting Chris Aluta. Continue. Okay, <laughs> Chris Aluta. Is that <laughs> Isoko Aluta actually? Yes. All right, yes. Chris, thank you very much for doing this with us. I appreciate you. Sit, uh, Chris is a cyber security, is a security expert and also a team mentor. A team mentor. And my name is Cecil. I am your host. Do well to join us again. At, and our next edition, this program repeats on Sunday by 3 p.m. on the NTA Network Service. My name is Cecil. Bye-bye.